Welcome to Hour 2 of the Midwest number one weekly motorsport show, Track Talk, All right. on the Racing Boys Broadcasting Network, brought to you by McCarthy Chevrolet. Once again, here's Scott Trailer and Kirk Elliott. Welcome back. Hour number two of Track Talk on Sports Radio, well, from Sports Radio 810 WHB to Racing Boys Radio, here on RacingBoys.com. I want to thank everybody for tuning in this here and uh again hour number two is brought to you by mccarthy chevrolet check them out at i-35 and raw high road raw hide road did i say it raw, raw high? high raw high raw hide road raw hide road santa fe and i-35 you can't miss them on the north side of the highway um get out there and check them out and tell brian schaefer that uh, racing boy sent you out there again uh, or check them out at kccars.com. That's their new website. You know, it was uh, uh, mccarthychevrolet.com for so long, but they are promoting now kccars.com, and uh, that will take you to the inventory of cars and any questions you might have. You can actually buy a car online. Did you know that, Kurt? You, sure. You could do all your negotiating right online. Yep. Uh, they have an area on the website where you can go there and do your negotiating, and uh, you don't have to be a good negotiator. You've There's seen the commercial a thousand times on Racing Boys TV. And you've seen it on some of our uh, video that we put up on our website. Um, that it doesn't matter if you're a good negotiator or not, because they're going to guarantee ten thousand dollars is going to guarantee that you get the best deal at McCarthy Chevrolet. So go out there. Kirk? Really, not much negotiating at all. I it, mean, you just go out there buy your car. Well, yeah, because they're it, well. You take a bona fide deal from any area Chevrolet. You know, you're going to get the best price. Right. Right. When, when are you going to go out and get yours, Kurt? Your car, uh, how many miles your car going on? 90,000. Oh, it hadn't hit 100 yet? Oh, it's no. hit 100, hadn't it? No. It hasn't? Really? Hmm. Interesting. It's soon. I mean, you know, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll make it happen. All right. This is hour yeah. number two. Everybody, Chevrolet. Chevrolet, man. <laughs> One of these days, I, 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 I'm holding my breath. I hope I don't have to hold it too long that Kirk owns a Chevrolet. Um, because Chevrolet is the only way. You're speaking to a Chevrolet man, by the way. All right, uh, Kirk, last night I was out at Lakeside Speedway. This is our number two, most people know. We get more into the grassroots side of things. We try to, you know, cater to some of the NASCAR folks that listen on Sports Radio 810 WHB. And uh, during the winter months, obviously, after NASCAR is over, it'll be more grassroots racing on uh, our number one. But last night it was out at uh, Lakeside. Darren Fuqua picks up his sixth win. I guess, would you call it six or seven, Kirk? Because he won the scramble out there for the McCarthy race. Would you count that as a feature win? I don't know. I call it seven. So Junior and I were talking, uh, Larry Lowry Jr. from in the pits.net. Um, we were talking last night, and I said, hey, that's number seven. He says, well, I don't count that because it was a, a scramble. Six points races and seven total. Seven total. And if you add the five that he's won over at Heartland Park, Topeka, what a season he's had. He's a points champion. He won over 11 there. over there last year. He's right. Kind of, but he won that championship, though. Still. He did. Yeah. And he won it last year, right? Up there? Two years in a row. Two years in a row. Because yeah. he won 11 races at uh, Heartland Park, Topeka. He is really a talented race car mm-hmm. driver. I mean, he's just done a fabulous job. He comes from a racing family. Right. His dad raced for a long time. And he is I think Darren's really, better than his dad, though. I'm oh, just I think, say. oh, no doubt about yeah. that. And he's mm-hmm. very smart race car driver, too. Oh, yeah. He's pretty heavy. Makes very few mistakes out on the yeah. racetrack. Well, speaking of mistakes, oh, my. Last night, Aaron Morant driving Vic Austin's car um, roared through the field. I can't remember where he started. It, it had to be fifth, sixth, somewhere in there. I can't remember exactly where. But he worked his way up to the front and got around Darren Fuqua and was pulling off and leaving him. It was his race to win. Um, went down into turn one, and I think it was might have been Mars, I'm not mis- if I'm not mistaken, the nine car. And he got to the inside of him, and for some reason— Mars drives a Grand National well, car, there's an, I think there's another M- Mars, too, that drives a nine. I'm not sure. Let me look here. Let me find out who that car was because I don't want to misspeak. That's it. Don Mars, number nine. Yeah, that's it. Don Mars driving the number nine car. He finished 15th. He uh, He's out of uh, Shawnee, Kansas. Anyway, um, see there? I, th- I knew what I was talking about there, man. Uh, Don Mars, anyway, was uh, down at the bottom. There was a little room at the bottom, and Aaron Morant decided to roll that car in there at the uh, uh, at, not at the last second. And, uh, and Mars knew he was there. And I, I think Mars was 
trying to stay out of his way, but Mars had already committed to the bottom. But there was enough room in between the tire and, and uh, uh, Mars for Morant to get in there, and he did. And for some reason, it didn't appear to me that they made contact. It looked like that uh, Aaron Morant just spun out and uh, went down and hit the infield uh, uke tire with his left front, knocked that left front tire down, the yellow comes out, and he pulls off with that That's left That's just not front. something you'd expect Aaron Morant to do. No. No. Ends up running 17th. So uh, leaving a little bit of a bruise on the old ego of Aaron Morant, and I'm sure Vic Austin as well, uh, pretty disappointed. They were by far the fastest car there last night. So uh, unfortunately for Aaron Morant, uh, unable to pick up the win. Uh, gets a DNF, finishes again 17th. Darren Fuqua um, goes on to win the race. But let's give a little shout-out to Kerry Davis. Kerry Davis was making a run towards uh, Darren there at the uh, late stages of the race. Um, track was slick. It was a great, for me, this is the kind of track I like. It was slick, but you had a little groove up at the top, and you had some down at the bottom. It was slick in the middle, and some guys were able to make it work. Any cushion up on the high side at all? No, you know, Lakeside doesn't really normally get a big cushion. I think there's a couple times this year that it had a pretty good curb out there, but typically it's kind of crumbly up there. You know, it's not like a, a something you can really go in there and bounce off of. I mean, there, there's some muck up there, and then it kind of it, it's light. I don't know how to explain it. But it's easy to go through that and get into the wall, unlike when you have a curb up there where you go in there and bounce it and get the car to turn and get it to go. Um, that's not what they had there last night. But uh, all in all. Nick uh, Bittinger, another solid run for him, well, third. I mean, come on, let's face it. He's got good equipment there. And Austin Siebert, let's give him a shout-out, one of his race, his heat race in dominating fashion. Um comes home fourth he's been out beating around with the usmts guys quite a bit this year well this year. I, I want to know what's going on with cody agler i mean he just really hasn't run as strong at the towards the end of the season as he did at the beginning well Here you don't know if his, his motor might have a lot of laps on it you know or who knows what could happen he was running really good last night he kept trying to pound the top and it was the long way around and it looked like maybe the faster way around towards the end of that race was down on the bottom and uh, Cody was really made some big gains up there on the top at the start of the race, but uh, kind of faded there towards the end a little bit. Tim, she- Tim Shields tried to make it three in a row last night in the Grand National Division, not and, quite able to get it done with Gary Donaldson right. coming through with uh, another on, victory for him. I'm going to back up. Did, did, are you saying that Cody Agler, he didn't hit the wall that hard, though? No, he, I mean, he tore, he tore quite a bit of his spoiler off there on that. You know, he was rubbing that wall all night. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's right. He knocked off half his spoiler, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that might have affected his car there late in the race. But uh, there you go. That That's what happened in the uh, A-Mods. And you were talking about Gary Donaldson. Um, good run for him. Uh, looked like Tim Shields. I don't know, Todd, what you thought. But I thought Tim Shields was going to check out and win that thing. But <laughs> some reason, Gary Donaldson late in the race found something and uh, was able to go up there and motor past uh, Tim Shields. And, and not only just get by him but actually pulled away from him a little yeah, bit he pulled quite a ways away I, he's probably kicking himself for that yeah no doubt but uh it was uh, still it was pretty good action in the grand national class uh I, you know i was timing cars out there it's been a long time since i put a stopwatch on them um justin siebert won the uh, factory stocks and then uh, brad smith uh well he's mr b mod he picks up the win uh, beating out nick newton Nick was making a pretty good run at him, but uh, Brad Smith, man, he is just the B-Mod guy for the last couple of years around this area. I he thought maybe him. Jake Richards was going to really uh, end up the season strong. He, he's had some good runs. He won a couple of races in a row here a few weeks back. He still ends up third. Uh, but uh, Brad Nick, Smith doesn't go there every week, though, does he? No. no. See. N- another double-digit win season for Brad Smith at all the different races he's participated right. in this year. Brad Smith driving the Cheetah chassis, a new chassis this year, and doing a great job with that uh, Nick Newton car that was built. But uh, it was a good night out there. A little, um, you know, I was a little surprised on uh, the speeds difference between the Grand Nationals and the A-Mods. Now, you would think there would be a glaring amount of speed difference, wouldn't you, Kurt? You would, but I haven't noticed that much difference all season long. Have you timed them? No, but so it's how would you they, know what their times I don't know, are? They then. just look as look as Kirk, fast. We're talking. <laughs> <laughs> they look as fast, um, huh? Really? No, I didn't have a watch on. Them. All right, okay. They don't look. They, I mean, just watching the two classes, the Grand Nationals don't look any slower than the modified. Well, they are me. slower. 
they are slower. Um, the B mods and the Grand National cars run somewhere around if they're really fast. Um, the B mods were running about a 21 flat, 21 seconds flat. The Grand National cars were running somewhere around, oh, 21 flat, <laughs> somewhere in that area. Mm -hmm. And the A mods, they were down there in that 20, 30 second, yeah. you know, 20.3 area. Well, I mean, I mean, you know that the A mods are faster, but yeah, I mean, just watching them, they don't look Well, they're much, only but. faster because of the motors. Yeah. That's the only reason. I mean, the cars are similar underneath. If you were to take the skin off a lot of those Grand National cars, you'd see that they are they are built a lot like a modified. But uh, unfortunately for the Grand National guys, they don't have the the uh, the ability to run. Well, they're not allowed to, not the ability. I guess some guys would have the ability to run a big motor, but they just don't allow it. You either have to run the two-barrel motor or you've got to run a crate motor. And um, so anyway, long story so, short, uh, not as much motor. Right. So with uh, one more night left, mm -hmm. one more points night left in the Grand National Division, Kelby Ostrander with a 24-point lead over Gary Donaldson, who missed the one night due to the suspension earlier in the year. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I think Donaldson would probably have this championship. You, I found out from Junior last night you can make up a maximum amount of points. Is 60, and it was 62 points, Todd? 60, 62 is what he 62 said. 62 points yeah. you can make up in any one given night, but that is if the guy that wins has the best case scenario and the guy that loses has the worst case scenario, so you'd have to finish dead last. But having said that, had Darren Kling not had the terrible night that he had a couple of weeks ago, he would probably be the champion right now so he had that bad night he's still only 30 points out in third sure place could have would have so but the uh, modified championship is long since settled uh tim carrick another championship for him in the modified division as we look down the other classes justin seifert who or seifert who won last night again uh expands his lead he's still 31 points ahead of joe smith jr and scotty moore all three of those guys finishing in the top three yes yeah, scott order some, last night he led some laps early but uh just wasn't able to hang with the top two he's just uh, a little bit off the pace of those guys so justin seifert i think you know with one more night to go i think he's uh he hadn't got it wrapped up yet but i i think he's pretty well got it and this b mod championship Going right down to the wire. Nick Newton, 16 points ahead of Gene Claxton with one night to go. Jake Richards, third, with 37 points behind the leader. Mm. Uh, Kirk, I, I, I forgot to mention our number one, and we should have did it and give our respect to uh, Jason Crone, whose daughter was uh, tragically killed on a four-wheeler. Um, you said she was nine? Yeah, born in uh, what, 2003, so I'd make oh. her, what, nine years old, I think. Uh, sad, sad thing. Terrible thing. Uh, Jason Crone was the national champion in the USMTS a couple of years ago. Mm. And uh, this accident that happened this past week, David Strimmy, who drives for uh, Brandon Davis, who is the uh, mm -hmm. owner of Swan Energy, mm -hmm. uh, they're going to honor uh, young Natalie Crone with a uh, design on the hood for tomorrow's race at Talladega, which you're planning on racing the whole whole day at Talladega tomorrow. That just about makes yeah. me want to ball thinking about somebody at that age. Yeah. And I can't imagine as a parent what it would be to lose your child, let alone at that age. So our thoughts and prayers are out there with you, Jason, and your family. And uh, hopefully you can get through this hard times. And um, I know that uh, she won't be forgotten, obviously. And that's great what David Strimmy and those guys are doing over there at Swan. Yeah, it certainly is. And, you know, it, it, this is another time where the racing is really, it's all about family. Mm -hmm. And, you know, these guys compete against one another, and they're fierce competitors, uh, but they travel with one another, too. And you know all about that, traveling mm -hmm. with the series, the Lucas Oil ASC Esprit Car Series. All these competitors, it's a tight they, they, deal. they fight with each other on the racetrack, but they travel with each other, they know each other. It's yeah. all one big family. No and in times like this... Uh, you know, this is what's great about racing is that people band together and help out their uh, fellow fellow competitors. Mm. Still just got me choked up just thinking about that. I can't believe it. All right. Uh, thoughts and prayers again out to the Crone family. And uh, good job, David Strimmy and all those guys, for uh, 
uh, showing support of the family during these tough times. All right, Kirk, uh, I want to get into this because the, we changed poll questions yesterday. I'll get into the new question, but I want to give the final results here on the show today. Uh, the question was, and we left it up there for a week, and I will tell you, folks, this has been one of the most uh, active polls that we've had in some time. Uh, 917 people voted on the question, which of these tracks would you most like to see reopen? Um, I-70 Speedway comes in first with 41% of the votes. Coming in second, which was a little surprise to me, Lake Ozark Speedway with 24% of the vote, followed by Central Missouri Speedway, who came in third with 21% of the vote. 197 people voted for Central Missouri Speedway, and that was a little surprising in itself to me that Lake Ozark Speedway beat um, CMS. And then I think... We- even though these guys are down at the bottom of the list, a little surprised by the order of the bottom two guys. Adrian Speedway picks up 8% of the vote versus Butler Motor Speedway, which picks up 4% of the vote. Now you ask me, why does what does that matter? Adrian Speedway hasn't been open in how long? Six? Oh, six, seven years. I don't know. I can't forget now. I mean, there's there's hardly anything there that resembles a racetrack. The, the track is still there, and I think Lynn Portson and his wife still live there as well. But the way I understand it, they've sold the concession, all the light poles, everything. It's all gone. So it would take a lot to reopen Adrian Speedway. But I think if you just ask people, which track would you prefer? I think that, you know, with the longer history that Adrian Speedway, I don't think well, anybody I, really, that's the really re- accepted Butler Motor Speedway. Well, that's that, where I'm going with yeah. this. I'm going with this because right down the road, about five miles, is a track that's sitting there with the grandstands, concession, bathrooms, everything, ready to open up, basically, other than doing some, you know, maintenance around the place. No real passion for that racetrack. Nobody's ever really taken on to Butler no. Speedway, have they? For a number of reasons. And, and I've heard that CJ is, uh, is uh, thinking about reopening that track in 2012. I don't know if that's the right thing to do, to be honest with you. I don't know if it's just better off letting it go. I mean, it, it only has enough grandstands for 200 people. I mean, really. You know what I'm saying? And I, I, the location is fine. I do know that somebody went down there and asked him, you know, made an offer on that racetrack and uh, wanted to buy it and was going to pave it at one time now this was about over a year ago that that happened but scott trailer no not no. me right who now. else would want to go down there and pave the race oh I, I know the guy believe me he, he made the call too he told me himself he, he was thinking about it but he had it at a certain price he wanted to put it in and he wanted to make it a pavement track and that didn't happen um so yeah i'm a little surprised about the, how much difference there is between the adrian and butler thing I think the most surprising thing out of all of this, and some people say, well, I was more surprised that I-70 finished on top. I'm not, because, again, no. they were double-dipping the voters there. Some were voting for the dirt track. Some were voting for the pavement track. But I will tell you, when I put that up there, I wasn't thinking about the dirt track. That, that's, we were just thinking about which track, uh, regardless of its dirt or pavement, do you want to see reopen again? I, I, I'm not sure how much of that When I think of I-70, do you think about that dirt track? No, I mean really. No, I'm thinking about the pavement track. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking about yeah. the real I-70 the big, Speedway. Let's yeah. just call it the big track. Yeah, that, that's what the I, dirt track. Now I never even thought about. No, that. I wasn't even thinking about that. And if they had never opened it back, you know, if they opened up the paved track and not the dirt track, you know, that's fine with me. I, I, I you know, I'm I just, not sure that the dirt track wouldn't work, but I wouldn't run full size cars up there. I'd run a bunch of entry level type stuff. You know, mini sprints, 600s. I think those days are gone at yeah. that location that's my opinion i've told you that kirk before and you I just know don't and think i know that's going to happen kirk i wasn't going to go down this road today you brought don't it do up it. don't do it huh don't do it no nah, i gotta talk about it because that's what we do here on track talk you know? know but you don't want to stir it too much no, you brought I up i-70 speedway I know, it, I know it i know it and i'm gonna i try to keep the memory alive of that racetrack i'm not gonna I, I kind of am on my own. You're cru- the one that I'm kind of on my own crusade to keep that thing alive. There's a lot of people blame you for shutting it down. <laughs> Thanks, Kirk, for reminding me of that. Would you? We know that's not true, though, right? You don't believe that. I don't believe that, right. but there are some people who do. Yeah, I'm the one that wrote the bad checks and didn't pay, pay the people's money and and didn't do any capital improvements on the facility. Yeah, that was me. That was me. Um. 
I don't know how to tell you this story without getting too much information. I've got to do it. And, uh, Todd, I got it. All right. Okay. All right. Just let me handle this. All right. Um, I know for a fact there's somebody interested in I-70 Speedway. I know this for a fact. Well, tell us who it is. No, I can't go into all the details because I don't want to get people too excited. I will tell you that I had a visitor stop by RacingBoys.com this week inquiring about I-70 and wanting to know some particulars about I-70. And this guy is a realtor. And he has sold somebody with money, property, many, many properties over the last couple of years. And this person has the money to go in there and build the racetrack with no return on the investment. Well, let's just put, put it to that. The key is build the racetrack. Rebuild it. Rebuild it. Rebuild which it. that we know that's well, what it yeah, would take. Absolutely. But because of the uh, quantity of land there, some people look at it as, okay, it's not too big a stretch if they can get it at a fair market value, which that I'm not sure can be done. That's that's the stumbling block all along. There's been people that have been interested. It's in worth it. what the owner is willing to sell it for. That's what it's worth. It's only worth what somebody's willing to somebody's pay for. Willing- <laughs> Kurt, not what they could want to sell it for. No, no. I mean, usually that's the I'll case. sell racing boys for a million dollars, but ain't nobody going to give it to us. <laughs> no, usually I would agree with you. Normally that's the case, but not in this case. Well, anyway, I will tell you this person come by and inquired about it and wanted to look into it, wanted to know my thoughts about the racetrack. We sit here and converse for about an hour in my studio. This guy has sold racetracks too. I'll tell you this much. This person just recently sold. Moberly Speedway. He was this real. Now you've identified who it is. Moberly Speedway. Have you spoken too much already? Maybe. And um, he also sold uh, Montgomery County down there off of I-70, down by Jeff City. He's also sold that property. And he's bought a lot of property up here for this person. (laughs) And uh, and they're looking at some farm property up in this area. Now you just nixed every kind of deal he's trying to swing. No, I'm not nixing nothing. Oh, okay. I want people to get excited about it because there's any opportunity. And I was talking to Karen Darling last night, and she drove by I-70. She said they were mowing out in front. Really? Not, not in front of the fence, but inside the fence. Mowing grass. Trimming it up to sell it. Yeah. Trying to improve the look of the property, which would tell me that, that somebody's something want, might be some, Somebody's wanting to look at to it, happen. so they're trying to yeah. maybe clean it up a little bit. So there when they go. go out and show them the property... That it might be more appealing. To Tells it. me the owners just might be more interested today of turning the property than they were, say, a year ago. They, they've eventually, really, Kurt. They've got to sell it, don't they? Yeah, I mean, what's the per, what's the point? Why, why hang on to a it, piece of property? Uh, I mean, what are you using it for? You know, what's going on? Well, I think ultimately what they think is that they can wait long enough. That the value of the property will come up to where they're comfortable to sell it for. I don't know. I, you know, last time we talked to Brad McDonald on here, it didn't go too good, right? I wonder if we ought to put that back up on YouTube, maybe. How many years ago was that? Three, I can't. Four years do we ago? still have it? I don't even I know don't if we know. have. Pretty intense conversation. And, and I will tell you, I don't dislike Brad McDonald just didn't think he was a very good promoter that's all and i think he got in over his head when him and his dad bought that racetrack i think they thought that the the amount of money they were going to make they would be able to put some money in the bank and 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 uh be able to operate off of the profits of the racetrack not uh they weren't in position really to take any they took some hits and weren't prepared to handle that well, yeah, they made some bad business decisions. Well, too. not only that, uh, there are some things that were out of their control, too, like bad weather the first year that uh, they got Kirk, off on the wrong start. No, that's the, the first year when the point fund money was half of what it was the first year. Because they couldn't afford to pay it. Huh? Because they couldn't afford to pay it out. No, well, well, there's more to it than that. But I'm privileged to that information, but I'm going to leave that alone because that's, n- that's none of my business. Um, and by the way, you can call in the studio if you'd like to chime in, 816-833-8553. Todd will pick up the phone and 
get you lined up to be on the show again 816-833-8553 a lot of eights and threes 833-8553 um there was problems with the property even before the mcdonald's purchased the facility yeah but that that the, you know what you got to be careful what you ask for because remember how i was always on ted carlson to get rid of him remember that slumlord yeah. hey terrible promoter was saying one thing about ted carlson he might not I've done a lot of capital improvements on I-70. Well, I wouldn't call him a... He wasn't a terrible promoter. He, no, he's a good promoter. He just didn't he capital didn't, improvements. He didn't... Uh, Re- reinvest. Reinvest back into the property as well as we would like. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, and, and he sold that racetrack, and that's when the McDonald's... But, again, that was a bad move. It, it, it was the beginning of the end, to be honest with you. I'd take Ted Carlson back in a heartbeat. Well, of course you would. Yeah. Because yeah, his absolutely. money was always good. He brought well, in the he, truck series, brought in ASA. He paid the purse money. Paid he the paid purse the money. fund money out. He I mean, did that. I know that Jack Dean, he was one of the first guys to say, I'm done. I'm yeah. not going to be treated like that financially. And that was the beginning of the end. And you know, Kirk, in any business, doesn't matter if it's a racetrack or anything else, once you lose the credibility, man, that's the beginning of the end. Yeah, it's hard Ted, to get when, credibility back. Right. When, you and when, when Ted Carlson owned the track, he mm-hmm. delivered on everything he promised. Mm-hmm. He did. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Now we we would have liked to have seen him uh, keep up the facility better than it. That was my biggest complaint: mm-hmm. is that not enough resources were poured back into the facility to keep the facility up mm-hmm. over the years. Uh, but other than that, Ted Carlson delivered on everything that he yeah. promised. Yeah, my bad. I, I you know that was a long time ago. That was in two thousand. Wish I could go back and change things the way I handled things back in those days, but uh, unfortunately can't do that. So let's just hope that uh, the McDonald family uh, is contacted by these people that are interested in the in the property out there, and maybe something can happen and we can get that place now back what, up and uh, running. What, what kind of uh, hurdles do whatever prospective owner well, has to go hurdles. through with the count, I don't. with Lafayette County? Well, there's I think there's a lot of issues that they're going to have to get through. Legal issues. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know. So I can't really, sp- I don't want to speculate on finances. Because there is, that, uh, that'd probably be not the right I, thing. I think to do. it needs to be pointed out that, uh, that nothing has really happened yet. But we just know that there's some people interested. Yeah. And we'll see where it goes from here. I'm skeptical. I'm very, well, I am ske- too. I'm very skeptical. Anything will come of it. But Kirk, you and I know who this person is that might be interested in it. And if this person was to purchase the racetrack, It'd be good. Be real good. Money would not be an issue. Money would not be an issue. No return on investment needed with this person. So let's hope that that happens. All I just want to put on camera one, Todd. Camera one. Camera one for right here. Please, Brad McDonald and Randy, I'm, I'm begging you, please, Price that at a fair market value so we can bring our racetrack back. I'm begging you, please do that, would you? It pains me to no end to go out there and look at that racetrack and drive by there. And I know it does anybody else that's grew up going to I-70 Speedway to go by and see the weeds growing up and just everything that's going on out there or lack of what's going on out there. You know, I know you don't you know, always agree with what we say over here on Track Talk, but I think the McDonald's would agree with us. That is, a, it's a tragedy that that racetrack is closed. And I know you can't afford to open it back up. Or maybe you can. Maybe you might come up with some money to do that. But that isn't what needs to be done. It needs to be sold. And if you can, in any way possible, talk yourself into selling it at a fair market value, please sell it. Because we're just about out of time, Brad. We're just about out of time. You're going to have to sell it soon. Or it's not going to be able to be saved. And, and, and it's right on the cusp right now of not being able to be saved, to be honest with well, you. Well, I think it, that's it, long. No, I disagree with you. I think it's long past no, being saved. No, the, no. It, the current facility as it is now, I don't think can be saved. Oh, you would definitely have to doze down some of the buildings. And no, you'd have to you'd redo have to a lot of things. But clear, clear the property and start over. You can't do that, Kurt. If you were going to do it there. You can't just clear the property, Kurt. That just doesn't work that way. You, you would have to use what you have. You tear it down to the skeleton and, and refurbish the whole facility. But it could be done. You, you just can't level the property. 
You just can't do that. I don't. I can't. I can't see. It. I well, mean, anything that's left out there would be uh, so far gone by this point that I just I don't see it. Okay, let's choose up. I'll take Jamal and Too Tall. You can have Chubbs and Skippy. Let's go. My ball. Okay. But you got skins. Not a good negotiator? You don't have to be a good negotiator at McCarthy Chevrolet. McCarthy guarantees the lowest prices on a new Chevy or we'll pay you $10,000. We guarantee there's no need to shop anyplace else. McCarthy Chevrolet, I-35 and Santa Fe, Olathe.